Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and we're going to be looking at the running ROI or return on investment. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com where of course you can get access to the chart that you see here um, as well as the same chart for many different assets, cryptocurrencies, and more. But what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to look at the running one-year ROI, uh, maybe look at a couple of other, other examples on longer time frames, and just sort of see the pattern that Bitcoin has previously exhibited. Now, if you guys remember back to Q3 of 2022, back in about you know July, August time frame, we sort of speculated that there would be another drop going into Q4, right? And one of the reasons is because actually quite frequently, what you'll see is you'll see the running one year ROI bottom out at around 0.2, right? I mean, give or take, right? Give or take. And, and I mean, again, you can see that it, 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 it did once again. Now, what's interesting is after it goes to that level, there does tend to be a, a significant run up in terms of the, the, the running one year ROI. Um, and what's really interesting is if you look to see where we are right now, it's, it's actually 2.53x above where it was a year ago. So not the bottom per se, although it was pretty close to the bottom in terms of uh, where the bottom was because the bottom came in in, in um, this low right here was November 20, 21st, December. I mean, it wasn't that much higher, right? So from that level, Bitcoin has gone up you know, from December, Bitcoin has gone up about 2.5x. And if you look at, at prior moves with Bitcoin, you can kind of see that, at least in the last couple of cycles, right, there, there's been a significant move that, that kind of loses a little bit of steam at around 3x in terms of the, the running one-year ROI, right? So you can see like in June of 2016, after the one-year running ROI was about 3x, Bitcoin sort of stalled out for, you know, a couple of months and then it actually dropped down for a little bit before finally resuming. But I mean, I know it doesn't look like much, but after it had this move in June of 2016, Bitcoin did not durably move higher until essentially half a year later, right? So there was, there was certainly a cooling off period after it got about 3x, you know, 3x up from where it was a year before. And in the last cycle, we actually saw something very similar where it, it moved up and it reached about 3x, a little bit less, I suppose, maybe about 2.89, and then it and then the one year running ROI cooled off. And I mean, again, this was the um, uh, the pandemic drop, but again, you, you can kind of see that it, it reached a level from which it had to cool off from for, for a period of time. And, you know, Bitcoin then durably went above it about, you know, 10 months later or so, right? So about 10 months later here, about half a year later over here. Now, again, right now it's at 2.5x or so up. Now, unfortunately, you know, the sort of the, the, the easy way for this to move up is sort of come and gone, right? Because now, instead of comparing this to prices that were going down, we're going to start comparing it to prices that were moving higher. And that's one of the reasons why the run, the one year running ROI will sort of cool back off is because, you know, it has to keep up that pace, if not more to, you know, to, to hold up that level. And if it just stays sideways, then the running one year ROI will then start to go back down because it's comparing it to a, a, a different reference point. But we can actually project out, you know, what it would take and by when to get it up to around 3x. Um, let's take like a future projection. And it's, it's really hard to know like where to project it to. Uh, you know, Bitcoin has already made it to, you know, to um, to 44k or 44.5k. I have no idea, to be completely honest, exactly how high it's going to go before it gets a significant, you know, more a larger pullback. I mean, we, we had about eight green weeks in a row, seven or eight green weeks in a row. This is a red week here. But it still isn't really that much of a significant pullback in the grand scheme of things. And if you look at things like the RSI, which probably, you know, they're not really the best things to look at in terms of buying and selling, but, you know, it is relatively elevated, right? So, you know, it's above, 
um, uh, above 75. It's currently at 76 or so. So in terms of trying to figure out, you know, exactly how high it will go, it's certainly until until there's a larger pullback is certainly anyone's guess. But if we were to just speculate, what would it take to get, you know, to get to about 3x up from where it was a year ago and, and by when? So I, I guess the first thing to think about would be potentially the whole spot ETF narrative um, that could come to fruition in early 2024. I, I don't know exactly when, but um, I think some people are, are speculating early January. So let's just say, I don't know, January 7th. Um, you know, where would the price of Bitcoin have to be to sort of match somewhere between 2.9 to 3.1x uh, from where it was a year ago? And so we could experiment, right? So why don't we why don't we first start with 46k and see where that puts it? So 46k would put it at about 2.7x from where it was a year before. If it were at 48k, that would put it at about 2.8, 2.8x. So that 2.81, you can see this one over here was about 2.89 before it finally started to cool off. So I guess, I mean, I guess you're looking, you know, for it to reach that level, it'd have to go a little bit above that. I don't know exactly how much above that, but we can sort of play around with it and see. So 48.5 would put it at 2.84. And, and again, remember, it also depends on when, because if I were to change the date, of this to a let's say a, an earlier date it would actually make it you know easier for it to get up to that level right so now if it happens by you know january 1st then it's up 2.9x which is essentially where it was here before it kind of cooled off and also where it was here before it finally cooled off so that's something that's that's interesting to sort of think about what would it take to sort of reach those levels of extension that it saw in in prior cycles um, now the next thing to look at is, is what would it, you know, where would it have to go to, you know, to come back down? Um, and again, there's no guarantees. I, I have mentioned before the idea of, of sort of a scare that comes later on that tends to be macro related. Will it play out or not? Right. I mean, it's, it, it's anyone's guess, I suppose, but it is something, it's always a risk I think is, is worthwhile to consider. So, you know, what would it take? For it to come back down to you know to these levels right you know back down to an roi of one well if you think about it for it to go back down to a one year roi of one it would have to go back to where the price was you know a year previously but at that point so like if it were to go back to like if it were to go back to say 25k next june then that would get you back to one Right. If it were to go back to 20K by March, again, that would get you back to an ROI of one. Right. So you can project that out by essentially saying, all right, well, you know, let's say by March, I don't know, 14th, if there were a scare in the market, um, you know, whether it's say like a, a deflationary scare, maybe maybe non-farm payroll, print to negative print or something, who knows, right, what it could be or if it'll even happen. But if it were to, I mean, you can see that that would actually get it back below one, which is essentially what happened last cycle, right? It actually went below one. So just something to consider. I also think it's 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 worthwhile to look at other time frames as well. And by the way, I mean, I'm sure, you know, for the for, for many of you, you're probably sort of eyeballing this and thinking like, oh, well, you can draw sort of an imaginary line through these peaks. And that's true. I mean, you, you can. And we've done that many times before. And, and in fact, there's a video on the channel. We were looking at this in in um, in March of 2021, I believe. And and this was one of the charts that made me make that video calling for a summer lull back in 2021. Right. The idea that we would basically re reached maximum extension and, um, and we need to cool off for a bit before going higher. And we did. Um, and you can kind of see we we sort of emulated what was going on over here, but that second peak wasn't nearly as impressive as as you know as it was back over here in the 2013 cycle. So that that level depends on you know when it were to occur. If it were to occur next year, it, it certainly wouldn't have to go as high to sort of hit that upper threshold. But if it were to occur in 2025, 
than it would, right? It would have to go, it would have to go higher because then you're going to be comparing to 2024 prices, um, which for the most part are likely going to be higher than than where it was for most of 2022. It doesn't mean that you can't have have scares down there, but it, you know, for the most part. So that would be something to consider as well. Um, it could be useful also to to look at maybe like a two year ROI. So this is the the, the two year ROI of a Bitcoin, and it really has had you know a very similar pattern through the years. Um, you can see last cycle it, it, it sort of came above one, and then and then it came back down, and then ultimately finally durably broke through that that one threshold. Uh, you know by about May of the halving year, and over here it durably broke through that one threshold by about August of the halving year, meaning the two-year ROI was above one durably by about halfway through the halving year. And so now you, you can see that it, it's still not above that level, right? It's still not above it. And, and it actually got rejected off of that level back in July of 2023. It's kind of interesting, right? Like that's essentially where it got rejected, where the two-year ROI was basically one. And if you think about it, right, if you go from April of 2023 to April of 2021, right, that was essentially, you know, that was essentially where Bitcoin, you know, started to, to, to have that, that big pullback, right? So you went up in April, June, June and July, that was sort of comparing to, to this pullback right here to 30K. And that was ultimately where it topped out locally two years later. Now, while the price of Bitcoin is higher than it was back in, in the summer, the two-year ROI has not reached that same extension up to an ROI of one. And so, you know, for it to, to get back up there, you'd have to think about well, where it would have to go. So if we just sort of think about this, where was Bitcoin two years ago today, right? Well, December of 2021, Bitcoin was already starting to come back down, right? So like it was basically back at like 50K. So what that means is if Bitcoin were to go to, let's say 50K by the end of the year, that would basically, and actually that would actually get you a little bit above one. So to imagine, it, it really depends on when it happens, because, you know, if you change this, to a little earlier, right? Let's change it to, let's say like the 24th, then it, it, it essentially gets you back to that one level. So that it, it's an interesting thing to look at because in both prior cycles, it did not durably break above one until halfway through the halving year, which is essentially another half a year away. Um, so that would be worthwhile to consider, especially considering the reference point will start to come back down. Right, if you think about where it was two years ago. And you can also look at this on, on shorter time frames as well. Like this is like the 90-day ROI, um, which could be interesting to look at. I mean, you can see that the 90-day ROI doesn't often go above two. And when it does, it's not, it doesn't tend to last for too long. I mean, it can last for, you know, maybe a few months, but it doesn't tend to stay around that level for 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 too long. But yes, at this point, Bitcoin is is up almost 2x from where it was only 90 days ago. The last time that we reached this level of, of almost 2x up in 90 days, the last time was in, in October 2021. And then the time before that was back in you know the early part of 2021. You can also see that we reached a 90 day ROI of almost two back in June of 2020. And in 2019, of course, we went much higher. And then you can also look at at 30 day ROI as well if you want, but I don't think that's as useful. There's also the three year ROI. And then here is, let me just remove the future projection. Um, and then here is the four year ROI, right? So then going back to the two year ROI and then the 90 day and so on and so forth, right? So I, I guess it's not actually, excuse me, I misspoke earlier. It's not at, it, the, the 90 day ROI is not at, at, at two yet. It's at, at about 1.6. That was including the projection out, right? So like it could go to that level if over the next couple of weeks Bitcoin were to go up. But right now it's only at, at, at 1.59x. Um, and over the last 30 days, it's up about 1.164x. So just to uh, clarify, clarify what I said. 
So we'll see what happens. I, I, I do think that looking at the running one year ROI is interesting um, and, and can give insight into the market that maybe maybe we weren't otherwise aware of. Again, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can access this sort of chart, uh, not only for Bitcoin and, and a lot of different cryptocurrencies, um, but also, you know, essentially a lot of different things, right? Like you could even go look at it for Apple if you wanted to and kind of see what are the trends going on with Apple. And kind of interesting that, you know, where the one year running ROI bottomed out in late 2022, early 2023 is, is, you know, essentially where the one year running ROI bottomed out in May of 2016 and around that level in April of 2013. So you'll find some interesting trends with a lot of different assets by looking at, at the, the running return on investment. If you guys like the content, again, make sure you subscribe. The sales going on into the Cryptoverse Premium. Link for that is in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.